I'm having some issues right now because um, I went to my restream to start streaming and suddenly it's decided that it wants to keep shutting down. No notifications, please. In fact, it still says I'm not live. What is going on? This is so weird. Yes, I'm here right now. It is, I'm sorry, I'm experiencing technical difficulties right now. But, um, so now I'm coming to you here via my phone, just my phone, <clears throat> in which I am, I'm here, so I'm going to try to keep an eye on stuff as I get everything prepared, um, but yeah, so tonight we're going to be doing, um, we're going to start the, the seasons of the mass. I did one earlier on uh, Monday where I showed you how to make just a quick uh, cheap head mold. This probably only costed like 78 cents. To do but it's perfect for holding masks and whatnot um so if you haven't seen it yet it's on my youtube channel uh just get on youtube.com slash the badass network and i'll show you how to do it there um but i'm gonna go ahead and get set up try to boom so i'm gonna be picking this up and getting this all ready hopefully you guys can hear me why is it so blurry? That's so weird. Why is it so blurry? Um, that is so weird. There. I think that fixed it. Okay. So, um, here we go. I'm doing the best I can right now to entertain you all <laughs> <coughs> and, and get some cool stuff made. But yeah, the first thing I need to do is start getting uh, get this all cleaned up, moved aside and whatnot. This is my basic work area and it is a little uh, disheveled. Just got done this past weekend with um, Volcon, so you can only guess. See if there's some fun music I can play in the background while I'm doing this. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Nope. What is... Huh? We can do this. We'll just play that through. Where is that playing from? Oh. Let's start up here. There we go. That's fun. Hey, how's it going, Smoking Simmons Barbecue? Good to see you. First time chat, by the way. Um, I am currently cleaning up my, um, my workstation. Uh, because tonight is the first, uh, basically, episode in my live stream where I am doing masks. Um, if you have, like, if you if you know Skull and Mortar, him and me are really good friends, and he likes watching my streams because I do a lot of uh, cool, creative things. I don't cook. I mean, I do, but not well enough to make a living off of that. But what I do is I create fun things. Like, there's my Voorhees uh, gas mask and whatnot. Um, as well as showed everybody how to make a uh, just a head holder for under like this was like I said probably eighty seven cents and it's that simple that you just throw the mask on it boom now you don't have to spend eight ninety nine to fifteen dollars for you know a styrofoam head or even like this guy this this is one of those mannequin heads that probably cost about thirty five bucks 
Um, but I happen to get this free at an auction in a bin um, at the old Hannah Haunted Acres uh, that they did about six years ago. So I'm going to pick up, clean the, this area up a little bit, get my list down. What I do is I have a list of uh, suggested things. I do masks for cosplay, for Halloween. I do masks for wrestlers. Matter of fact, uh, you... Next time Skull and Mortar's on, ask him to see any of the masks that I, I made him. He's actually, he's got two um, right now. Back in the day, Skull and Mortar had me make him like, sorry, you can't really see my face right now. I only have one camera because for some reason my restream wasn't allowing me to uh, play anything. <laughs> so every time I, I opened up the stream, it would just automatically shut off. So, uh, so that's why you can only see my... So you can only see my hands right now. There, we'll just talk like this. Uh, but anywho, um, I was even thinking maybe if I had time to set up a mirror right here so you, people could see me. Um, you can even see the lag between me doing this right here and then what's going on over there. But I, uh, at one time, Skull and Mortar, or Brandon Prophet, whoever, had probably, I want to say... 10 or 12 masks that I made him and then he had like another 200 masks on top of that. that everybody made him for, for his uh, wrestling character and then um, he uh, did a nice little benefit where he auctioned them all off and he's slowly building his uh, collection up again. So I have two masks uh, that I made that are in his possession. I made masks for another which we're listening to the some of the Chainsaw Massacre music, but uh, Carver of Cutter's Alley, um, which he'll be facing soon, Brandon probably be wrestling against. I've made him a couple items. Uh, I made him a mask, a crown. I used to do the Luchador style mask, but now I do more of kind of like entry ways. Like the, the fun stuff you see the wrestlers come out to the ring to and then they take it all off. Um, but yeah, I, I had done Luchador masks in the past. I had a couple around, but I don't know where they went, so <laughs> I, I sold most of those out. Uh, but yeah, I made some for him, I made some for another uh, gentleman named Zodiac, and I've gotten three or four other wrestlers asking me to commission them some masks too, and they like my creepy style and whatnot. But I, I just use basic, uh, like here's one uh, for these clowns that uh, I'm getting ready to deliver to. They're... Uh, Giggles and Twinkles, and they're they're a tag team that are clowns, and they're called the Disciples of Chaos. One wears all red, and one wears all green, so I thought this would be more appropriate. So there's that. That was a, those were fun to do. Now, I was supposed to give them to them months ago, and I just I got to get there. And then uh, this was a cosplay piece. Thank you, appreciate that. That's the, uh, if the Joker was in the Purge. So, he even had a, uh, a crowbar that he would carry around that had the hook part of the crowbar, had a little smile put on it so you could hold it up and it either looked like a frown or a smiley face. Thank you. I actually did a pair of goggles. One of the very first goggles I did, uh, the nails were going inward on it, but it was never to the point of, you know, being a danger. And I did uh, the road to VoltCon where I did VoltCon. And uh, this mask is, I rolled the dice and it selects like that right there. That's my uh, my Spider Voorhees mask. So it's mix mashing them both. There's the axe mark into the Voorhees, which causes the Chevron and whatnot. Um, if, you, if you've ever heard of Slipknot, Joey Jordanson was, you know, the, their drummer for the longest time before he passed away. And so I, I have four different eras of Joey Jordanson on that mask that I did. Uh, you know, there's a demon doll head, but it's all what the... Neon Navo, how's it going? I'm getting ready to lay down the list and roll the dice to see what I am making. Uh, but I was showing off some of the other stuff I had previous, you know, as we call it, we'll call it the... Uh, what's it called? Uh, season which was the Road to VoltCon. So we're starting the new season, which is masks, masks, masks. And it is just me getting stuff ready. Uh, I'm gonna step out real quick and grab my list so we can roll and see what I'm making tonight. So give me one second. Cause you know, I'm all about being prepared. Oh, 
Okay, I'm back. So here's the list we have for tonight. And uh, it starts with, uh, if I roll one, it'll be Mankind Voorhees. Hey, Jensky, how's it going? Oh, nice, you're Bobby Hannon. <laughs> that's, that's great. <clears throat> then uh, Mumra will be the next mask, which is, it's a dollar store mask that I'm going to make it look more like Mumra from Thundercats. Hey, Master Hooks is here. How's it going, Master Hooks? So, then we have the Voorhees 4-Way. If you guys saw the Voorhees 6-Way I did, I took a hockey mask and split it into six sections and did a different uh, style of Friday the 13th hockey mask on each little section. Um, so this one will be a 4-Way if I roll that. Then we have Slipknot Nixon, which if you guys know the band Slipknot, like I said, I, I will take... This Nixon mask that I had that was made for a uh, character called Nix, and it it's a little tight on them. They want it to be more like a Slipknot style mask, so I will be redoing that. Uh, then we have the JP. Whenever you see the word the letters JP, that means junk punk. That was my original style. I called it. Had the red sequin jacket. Oh, nice. Oh, I need to see pictures of that. Neon Navajo, once again, I, I got some great uh, people on this list right now. And also, Jensky, congratulations on the wedding. I got to, I, I, I was driving home, so I wasn't able to watch it live, but I did watch it later, so it was awesome. Um, which, by the way, yes, this past weekend, uh, Jensky got uh, married to her now husband. And all the best to them. Um, so the JP is junk punk. Junk Punk was the style I did way back in the day. It's what I called it. People always tried to throw things away, so I'd take the stuff people got rid of and made it into something cool, which is why I had the phrase, once discarded, now highly regarded. Um, now we have the duct tape mask, and that's going to be fun. I have no idea what I'm going to do with that. We'll figure it out together. If I roll number six, then number seven, the deluxe Dollar Tree skull. I have a skull that I bought from Dollar Tree, and we'll see how well we can do it up. Um, and then we have the Children Voorhees mask. There's a small Jason mask that I purchased uh, last year and this year from Dollar Tree as well. And it is one of the closest masks that replicates uh, a Jason Voorhees ma uh, hockey mask. So that'll be a fun one to do. Thank you. It means a lot. We're doing... Oh, the Covered Bridge Festival. That'll be fun. I used to go to that all the time. Uh, then we have the Nightmare Sully Mask. I have an old school Sully Mask from Monsters, Inc. And I will be really creeping it up if I roll that. Um, then we have the Slipknot Witch Mask, we have, which is an old uh, foam uh, rubber witch mask that I have that I will go out of my way to give it the uh, Slipknot touch to. I've been on a Slipknot kick recently. Um, then we have a mass display case and I'll be taking random found bits of like wood and whatnot to build a small case to uh, showcase one of my masks that I know I will never be doing anything to because it's kind of sentimental. Um, and then the last one, number 12, we wrote number 12, we got skull paint and then we have this here just in case of some of these that I get. So there you go. Those are the 12. And the skull paint is because I have a latex skull, which is funny because I can't wear latex. I'm actually allergic to latex. Um, I use that same line on my wife. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here we go. We have the list right here. And how we do this is, if there is, uh, we, we have our rules of play where you guys can join along. I will roll the dice. Whatever the dice chooses is what I will end up doing. And I have, where's my 12-sided die? There's a 10-sided one. That is an 8-sided die. Uh-oh. I had my 12-sided die over here. I got to do more cleaning. <laughs> I need to have like a marker bin and a, let's see. What have y'all done to me? Hey, man, I, I will tell you this, Master Hooks. Ruin board. Ooh, a Sandman Batman combo mask. That might be fun. Um, what what I'm going to do is I love I lo I already had somebody else tell me do the He-Man thing where it's Man Thing mask with uh, blonde hair. 
um, every time I take, because I also have a very long list. So every time a, one of these gets knocked off, another one will go in its place. And I kind of like the idea of a of doing a, a, a Batman Scarecrow mask. That might be kind of fun. So it might get added onto the list depending on what I knock off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's my dice, Igor? Um, so... I'm very surprised. I usually, usually the dice is just sitting right here. But, you know, I had to do the loading and unloading and everything to get ready. Voltcon was extremely awesome. I had, I had a great time. And I really got So I just moved stuff around. I'm like, that's good, right? And when I should really just be cleaning up stuff. So put the, put the head over there. I got more dice. See if any of these are it. Six sided, four sided, ten sided. Boom, twelve sided, right? Just make sure. Yeah, there's nothing above twelve. Boom. There's my twelve sided die. Found it. A Jax. Are you talking about like half Jack, half Sally, or if Sally was Jack, or if Jack was Sally? <laughs> And I got some creepy music playing right now. This is actually uh, Sane Asylum's Sounds from the Echo Fields. Um, if you're liking it's some spooky time uh, Halloween music. If you're liking it, I can find the link. I believe uh, they are available for download and play. Let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the Jack Sally mask you mean. So it's like, so would it be like Jack and Sally like half and half or Jack with a Sally theme or Sally with a Jack theme? Uh, uh, got my son Ethan watching now. Nice. Just so I'm aware. How long does this show go? It normally goes till like, um, I had a late start today uh, because I was having issues getting my restream to work. That's why I'm just here. That's why you can't see my face. That's why when I talk, I'm doing this now. Um... <laughs> Half Jack, half Sam. Okay, I can probably do something like that. Um, this show normally is on from 8.15 till about 9.30 uh, on a Thursday night. And then I also have the AM shows, which is coming back this next Monday, where it's 8.30 till almost 10. Uh, 8.30 AM. Uh, 8.15 AM, sorry, until 10 AM. Uh, so normally about an hour, hour and a half total. Um... But anyway, let's roll the dice, shall we? And oh, oh, how the rules go is whatever I roll, that's what I do. If there is something you want to see me roll, and I roll and it is not the number you want, I have a sound bit or sound notification. Let's see if I can play it real quick for you guys. And you'll click the sound alerts, and you'll go to the end, the last page, and there's one that says announce force reroll. Now, when you select that, you'll hear this. This music will play, and it will tell me that I need to roll again. Force re-roll. So then I'll take it, and I'll roll again. It may be the same. It may select the same number or not. It's just that's how the dice roll goes. It's a very drawn-out roll. <laughs> now, for a 100 bits, you can actually select... You can do the 100 bits and say, get rid of it. Meaning, uh, like, let's say if you totally do not want to see me try to make a mask completely out of duct tape, you say, uh, you play the 100 bits, and then you just say, number six, get rid of it. That means if, if I ever roll a six during this time, it's automatically tossed out. It's automatically a reroll. And then for 500 bits, uh, you can do a uh, half where... Either 7 through 12 or 1 through 6 get completely blocked out. Meaning if I roll any of these numbers, I automatically have to re-roll. Um, and then for a 1,000 bits, you just tell me a number and I start working on it. So there you go. So those are the rules. We're going to go ahead and start. Oh, yeah, I use a little trash can. As, yeah. And boom. Number one, Mankind Voorhees. That's where it is. Number one, Mankind Voorhees. Does anybody want me 
to re-roll, or are we okay with me doing Mankind Vorhees? Giving you guys a second. Yeah, Master, Master Hooks is excited. I'm almost willing to bet if, uh, if uh, Skull Mortar was here, he'd be pretty excited too. He's been waiting for Mankind Vorhees. Too bad he's not here. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we're going to be starting Mankind Vorhees. I'm going to get a new base down here. The new season... Uh, workstation and uh, as soon as I grab him it'll be like another 30 seconds so let's go grab it real quick this off the side. Mankind of Wordies is now gone. All right, so, and you see me laying down the, uh, the canvas, and the reason why is because whenever I do uh, my work, I always leave the canvas down as my catch-all, because I really like these stickers, and I don't want to destroy them. But besides that, um, ever since 2011, I used a piece of cardboard at my game store when I would make stuff so that I didn't get anything messed up. And a gentleman who sells one painting and takes care of two to three years of his lease had seen this piece of cardboard I was going to throw away and he asked me if I could frame it so he could sell it. I thought he was insane. And then he uh, gave me a check for $250. So <laughs> what I do is I use this as my catch-all and then when the season is over, I have a new piece of artwork. Um, which I think is fun. It's a, it's a fun idea. It's, you know, because when somebody sees it and they're like, what is that? And I get to tell them it's, it's this and this and this, and you can just name off everything. Um, so this is the new season. So might as well give it some proper... There. Now we all know. I've already gotten this started. Now, last year around uh, Halloween time, I was actually in talks with somebody that was interested in having me do a hockey mask style of man thing. So I had it drawn out. Um, so there we go. This is the idea for what the mask would look like. And it's just, this is a typical, you know, it was an 87 cent uh, plastic hockey mask. I got off of Oriental Trading, and I drew out all the dark areas is where I'm going to cut out and everything like that and told him exactly what I was going to do to it. He ended up changing his mind, but I never got rid of the mask. I just left it around for when I would find a time to work on it in no time like the present because the dice chose me to. I just let the... That's the beautiful thing about science. <laughs> I, let, I let the dice decide, and the dice have now given me the decision... To actually work on this. I'm excited. Like I said, I wish Skull and Mortar was here. He'd probably be like, oh my god. He'd be here for it right now. Now because I have a lovely wife, Mrs. Ratlock, and Minnie Vinny is currently in a slumber mode, I'm going to be using a more silent method than just, you know, dremels and whatnot. Yes, for science. Yes, and if you guys do not know, I am also on the side. I am a professional wrestler. I am Vinny Ratlock, the masquerading scientist of entertainment bent on world domination through inter fun and entertainment. While you guys are having fun, I am slowly taking over your domain. My goggles are currently, I believe Roji has them. He's getting them nice and cleaned up after this weekend. 
hockey masks were actually the very first masks I started modifying. Um, so that's why it's always, it's always been my number one choice. No matter what kind of a mask I make, I always go, hey, I can start off with one of these. It is like my number, this is my, my signature piece is the fact that I'm using a hockey mask. And then I branched off from hockey masks to where I was doing goggles. And I went back to hockey masks. I even, I have a, a really awesome uh, man thing uh, cosplay that I did years ago, 2016. And in the back piece of my man thing costume, I have five or six different hockey masks throughout it. And you have to kind of look at it. It's almost like those, uh, those one, uh, optical illusions where you're like, oh, I see a sailboat. <laughs> so here we go. I think this is getting nice and heated up. I hope it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Because I'm sitting there like, oh, and then I do it, and everybody's like, well, this was very lackluster. <laughs> Sometimes I have projects that I do, and it's just like, yeah, I'm just getting it done. That's right. Uh, I need a better test to do this with. There we go. All right. So I'm going to use this basically as a cutter, and I'm going to cut these areas loose. Things are going to fall the wayside. Get a light on here. There we go. Maybe that'll help. So let's go ahead and start off here with the eye. I would have thought I'd... There we go. I feel like I need a pair of pliers or something. It just this feels kind of loose. I don't want this this tip to be as hot as it is and fall off onto my arm or something like this. So let's see if I can tighten it up just a little bit more. Okay. Thank you very much for the emote master hooks. And also, either on the 28th or the 29th this month, I'm going to be on Twitch streaming live at Night Terrors in Franklin, Indiana. Uh, my reaction live going through their haunted house. So that's going to be fun, too. And there's very few haunted houses that actually make me jump. And Night Terrors was able to do it to me last year. They actually had me jump in one of the rooms. There we are. <laughs> I'm just slowly burning myself with melted plastic. Alright, so now we gotta do we'll carve out these nose the nose slots real quick. And then when I carve these out, I'll be using a uh, Zacto blade to uh, take the edges off of them. Also remember, if any of you guys happen to have any bit of a... Uh, a religious, especially Christian affliction, <laughs> Christian affliction. Uh, Master Hooks, actually, he does a stream where he uh, does Jedi Bible studies. He uh, goes on his favorite, uh, uh, it's a Jedi, what is it, Jedi Knights 2, uh, and he will do a Bible study. Right now he is covering Genesis, so that's kind of fun. Especially if you find yourself to be a religious person and you would like to know a little more. I think he's a... And I think I myself am not full-on uh, Christian 
you know, JK2 or JKA if it's got a lightsaber. <laughs> if it's got a lightsaber, he's there. I myself am not too keen on churches and whatnot, but at the same time, um, I've been, on the times I'm able to come in, I'll come in and listen to Master Hooks. I think he's very enlightening in the way he talks about it to where it is a lot more pleasurable listening to Master Hooks talk about the Bible than, say, some of these normal, run-of-the-mill, you know, pastors, reverends, padres, whatever you want to call them. They kind of just, they make, they try to make you feel like you are forced to have the belief systems and whatnot. And Master Hooks kind of has an approach of where he gives his interpretation and just basically says, you know, it's up to your own how you want to believe and whatnot. And he's very welcoming of everybody. Even if you're a non-believer, he still likes to talk to you. But I like it too because I feel like he's not trying to convert me. We're just, it's, it's like with him talking through it, it's kind of like just having a book club, you know? And the book club just happens to be the Bible. <laughs> Now, on top of that, if you got if Neon Navajo is still around, oh my gosh, you got to watch some of his gameplay. He does some really good stuff, and he's great. You know, he's he's the commentator. He does commentary for Asylum Wrestling Revolution for Primos Premier Wrestling, <coughs> and uh, 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 World's Finest Wrestling. He does a lot. He's got a really good voice, really good personality. So definitely, if you can, go check him out. On his Twitch, he's he's a treat. A treat and a half, if you will. Two and a half treats. And if you can, uh, uh, Smoke and Simmons Barbecue, if you can drop any links that you have for everybody else to check out, just in case they're not on uh, Skull and Mortar's Twitch, drop your links down here, guys. I like, I like networking, so... The most important most important meal of the day networking I just want to cut these little guys off so I'm not really cutting I'm just melting the elastic ooh when elastic gets melted it's got a different smell to it <laughs> forgot about that there we go that elastic stink on there and you know what's funny uh, somebody else, uh, that, uh, Mick Foley released some dude love song just recently. And one of the dudettes was wearing a mankind have a nice day hockey mask, but it was all painted. It wasn't sculpted. It was just the image and the, the, the yellow smiley face was just added onto it. And I was like, Oh my God, somebody already beat me to it. <laughs> so now I'm like, I, I really got to do this. <laughs> All right, there's a good link. If you haven't yet, click on that link and subscribe. It's always free to subscribe. So, and then that extra effort to ring that bell for all notifications. And yeah, it takes longer to cut with the uh, the heat the heat, but at the same time, it's still silent enough so my wife and my son can sleep. <laughs> No problem. You're you were kind enough to be here and check me out. Hopefully, you'll like enough of my content that uh, I'll see you in future streams. And if not, thank you for at least giving me a test drive. A lot of people love it. And it's just a wood burner. That's all it is. I'm going to change it. For some reason, this song just... There's so many different versions of this song that have been just tweaked. Just the teeniest bit. Oh, hold on. Uh, let me start this one up. 
Sen wants to know if you will be painting the mask or leaving. I'm going, I intend on painting the mask. I want to give it kind of a, and I'll be doing some texturizing as well. And where you see these holes, I'm also going to be uh, putting in like some rivets or spikes. I may, I may do something a little different to, to give my own flavor to it. But yes, there will be more than just uh, cutting, cutting out the design. Um, however, you know, if, if you guys ever want a version of this and to keep it orange and stuff, all you got to do is just, uh, either tell me on here or send me a whisper and I'll, I, I like trying to recreate some of my stuff. There you go. Very well. Like I said, I normally am on Mondays and Thursday nights and then Monday through Thursday mornings at 8 15 AM. I do this. So, and everybody's like, oh, you're already making masks. And I was like, yeah, Halloween's on the way. And also, almost any of my creations, unless you hear me say it's a commission, they're all for sale. Everything's for sale because, you know, now I'm not going to actually put leather on it. I'm just going to give it kind of a leather feel because I have the leather, but I want to keep this, you know, the mask, the plastic and whatnot. But yeah, so if you like it enough and you say, oh my God, I want that first come first serve. If nobody wants it, as soon as uh, the show is over, it gets put on my Etsy site. So, which it will still be for sale on my Etsy. I got the Outlaw Mud Show group chatting right now. I guess there's a, there's a big to do right now in uh, the independent wrestling area because... Uh, some guy that used to announce for uh, ICW No Holds Barred is going to be a uh, announcer now for uh, Extreme Pro Wrestling that's back. We got uh, um, basically it's uh, you put the leather uh, you put like use the different browns and tans on it, um, and then. It's just as simple as taking an actual piece of leather and laying it on it and just, just pushing it into it to see if uh, it comes about. That's melted plastic on my finger. Master Hooks, try not to be too pressing with what I believe in because you have free will and at the end of the day, I'm a messenger and not... Exactly. And, that, and that's why I think it's more pleasurable to, to listen to you Master Hooks than just, you know, a typical pastor, reverend, padre, or whatever they call themselves in the church at the time. I myself am also ordained, um, since I'm working with the hockey mask. I am, I am a uh, father reverend. That's right. I took both of those titles. Of the Church of the Good Son, which is a church that is based around the teachings of Friday the 13th. Which is fun when I get to marry people dressed up as Jason Voorhees. So we only got two more sections to cut out before it's done. This is when it's really... You're at the point where you're like, yeah, I really don't want to push too hard or pull too hard. Because sometimes when that happens, the plastic, even though you're melting it, the plastic will still crack. Ah. You went right back to that song. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? I love the song. I mean, I made it, so. I'm going to take it. I need to take it off shuffle. Off shuffle. I said off shuffle. There we go. We're good. Oh, where that? What, what happened there? No, nope, there we go. All right, so we got just this final piece to take off. Now, back in the day, I used to sand it before I would uh, do all this cutting and stuff, and I realized I'd rather just cut all the plastic pieces off because then there's less to sand. Tonight, I'm probably going to go till about 
and then we'll be finishing it up on um, uh, Monday morning at 8.15 a.m. So I want to try to get as much done as possible. I think it's something about, you know, how you said uh, it's so soothing and it's so cool to watch just, you know, heat melt in the plastic. And a lot of people have told me that. They're like, I just like watching this. Uh, it's almost like a destructive creation and whatnot. So I totally dig it. And now I see I, I made these holes way too big. They're not going to be that big. So um, what I'm going to do here. Grab this. Hey, look who's up. Uh, I know. I, I will be starting my morning show uh, this next Monday. I'm using a paper towel to wipe off this heat. <laughs> yes, it's easier for you to catch it. I understand, Wes. Um, but it's been fall break, you know, and I'm spending time with my family in the morning. And once he goes back to school, I'll have that time available again. All right, so here we go. We're going to put in these holes for the... Just poke after poke. It's exactly, it is weird but cool at the same time. It's like, what is he doing? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> okay, so I have these four to do. have all these should just lay it down lay it down to it and don't forget the chin There we go. Now, the, one more thing I do want to do is I'm going to use this heat gun and actually go over for texture reasons. Carve these lines in. Deep enough to give it a ridge, but not so deep that it will uh, come off. If you can, it's fine. You'll still be able to see me on Thursday nights. And it's just, it's always depending on, you know, if, if I get an influx of viewers, I may add another night too. Because right now on Mondays, we just, we basically have a nice little conversation. We watch a little bit of wrestling. Don't think I'll be able to catch any of the morning shows due to work, but it's fine. Awesome. Well, then I'll be seeing you every uh, Monday night, Thursday night. 
I actually have a gentleman, TJ, will uh, watch me or listen to me in the mornings while he's uh, working at his machine shop. Keep it going. I'm very happy to have you here. I think it was one of my favorite things is when I was uh, streaming and stuff and I actually had Skull Mortar tell me, he goes, you got, you give me enough to where I actually want to go and uh, start streaming too. And he did look where he's at. I'll be filming and tasting that watermelon barbecue sauce tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> Seriously. I, I And you know what? The funny thing is about that watermelon barbecue sauce is I honestly don't know if I genuinely liked it or not. Because I tried that alcohol hot sauce first. And it was burning the back of my throat. So by the time I... Tr and see, I don't like that Dream World. Uh, Coca-Cola Dream World. Don't like it at all. But... With that sauce in the back of my throat burning, and I drank it, I was like, actually, this is really nice. So when the, when I tried the watermelon, I was like, oh my god, this is good too. And John just couldn't believe it, you know. And I'm like, well, maybe I like it because that hot the hot sauce I tried like burned my throat so bad to where anything was refreshing. So I think when you film it and put it on there, you'll be the the end all <laughs> for, for the argument if it was actually good or not. Because to me, it tasted like the Heinz 57 steak sauce. And then John said, well, I don't like that steak sauce. I said, then that's probably why you didn't like the watermelon. I'm working on Skull and Mortar trying to convince him. Because years ago, when he first started and he was making sauces and stuff, he always made a joke about doing boat hand sauce and the reason why he did that is because when we had our stable together i was the boat hand vinny ratlock um before i decided to take over the world through mad science um and i wore a boat on my hand and would just yell out boat hand and it was my weapon and everything like that and he loves it that's why he used to call me boat hand all the time and he made a comment about making some boat hand sauce and i keep holding him up to it and then uh, I approached him last night. I said something to him about the potentiality of him making a skull and mortar zero sugar barbecue sauce. Because there is some out there. And with the fact that I know my AC1 is somewhere over 10 now, I'm like, I need to start doing a lot more zero sugar stuff. And I love barbecue sauce. So I'm like, I need a zero sugar barbecue sauce. And... Skullmore told me, he's like, you know, I've been, I keep talking about it, I've never done it. And I said, why not make that the boat hand sauce? <laughs> and he LOL'd it. <laughs> but I'm like, come on, that'd be perfect. Looking for a weird, a weird barbecue sauce. So let's do a weird zero sugar barbecue sauce. Call it the boat hand. I'll even bring back boat hand just to help advertise for it. So, uh, so next time Skull and Mortar's on, we need to start, we need to start the, uh, hashtag boat hand sauce. <laughs> all right, cool. So that's all. I can turn this off now, which I think I just did. Okay, now it's off. I'll let him sit and chill. Well, that's sitting and chilling. Before we do any kind of painting, we need to dance. No, uh, <laughs> and get out some, uh, some, uh, yes, here we go. Got some sandpaper here. Have to set off the other view. Yeah, I, re I remember you saying that. Yeah, there's some because somebody else wanted a shot at it. So here we go. We're going to sand it down so that we can make sure that the paint stays on well.
free shipping. <laughs> Very nice. And it was, it was a plastic toy boat. Um, we were we were doing a show, and the show looked like it was in like a small like schoolhouse. Uh, but it was in a strip mall. To where if you got in the ring, you could lift up your hands and you were touching the ceiling. And uh, we were doing a fans bring the weapons, and all the fans' weapons were in like this uh, this little like trash can type thing. Now, Brandon Prophet reaches in, he pulls out like a uh, barbed wire bowl bat. Cool. Then uh, Dayton Suave reaches in, he pulls out a, uh, I think it was like a, a keyboard or it was a uh, barbed wire tennis racket. Cool, my turn. I reach in and I pull out a child's toy boat. <laughs> And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and I had the boat on my hand when we went out. And I was a bad guy at the time, or a heel, if you will. And this person was just just giving me the full rundown, just yelling at me and everything. And as I was talking to him, the boat was like one of those speed boats where it has the two little sides. My hand fit perfectly in between them. So as I'm talking to the person, I'm doing this, and the boat is at the very end of my hand. I was like... If you da 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 da, I'll, you know, your sister this and da 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 to your mom. And I looked at it and went, boat hand. <laughs> and I did that and I became the boat hand. It was almost like the mistake of uh, Al Snow's head and Mick Foley's Mr. Socko. And that boat became my source of power. And everybody loved it. If I didn't show up with the boat, People would get upset, like genuinely were getting upset if I forgot to bring my boat with me. The, to where even the boat had a, its own storyline. It was insane. Matter of fact, when I won my first championship there, uh, the real popular thing was uh, the wrestlers, you know, Stone Cold had his smoking skull belt and The Rock had his Brahma Bowl belt. So when I won my championship there, I came out with the boat belt I don't have close to me, but I'll have to show it off at a later time. And it was that toy boat stuck on the front of it. All right, cool. We got that. So now, uh, since that's sanded, I'm going to take this Zacto blade and very carefully uh, carve off the edges where all those little extra little pieces of plastic are. There you go. Bohan blessing. See, the funny thing was, I wasn't even in that match. Just coming out to help out, uh, you know, Brandon Prophet because we were all a group. We were called the Bastard Squad or crew. I forget which one it is. John always gets mad because I always end up saying it wrong. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he won the match. But everybody wanted me to keep the boat after that, and I would. And the I would have wrestlers tell me. I'm not going to sell that boat shot. I'm not going to sell to a plastic toy. You're going to have to blast me with that. I remember one was the bouncer, uh, rest in peace. He said, I won't sell that. He goes, if you're going to, if you're going to, the only way I'll sell that is if you hit me hard enough. And I said, well, how hard I got to hit you? He goes, I guess we'll find out in the ring. And when it came time for me to use that boat on him, I popped him and he went down. <laughs> he went down fast. Matter of fact, I think I split his head open. You know, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't fake it. It was definitely a real uh, hard way. Because we got to the back, he's like, oh my god. He goes, I can't believe you smacked me that hard. He goes, what is that boat made out of? <laughs> Said it's an experiment. There we go. Just smoothing all these edges off here. That's the only real issue when carving with these things. With the the because sometimes you do a really good job, and sometimes it just leaves these burrs on the edges. If you do not take care of them, they'll cut you up. Because I've done it before why I didn't clean the plastic edges off, and oh I put it on, I scratched my face up. There we 
we go. Perfect. And I always try to say this is kind of a tutorial because if you see me do the entire process, you yourself can do it at home, but just do be careful when, even if you're an adult, I said, even if you're an adult, just be careful because adults too many times are like, Oh, I can do this. No problem. Da, 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 da. And then they slice their fingers open. How was that? Jenski, uh, Skylar is waiting to try to do a fundraiser and earn money for a month. St. Vincent to donate. Oh, oh that's very cool. Yes, please do a post. Very nice. Looking good. Okay, cool. So now, time for some fun. I think. Yes. Time for paint. I got my brushes here. Is that still hot? No. So we got brushes. Put my spaceship over there. Oh, I did. It's right here. Okay, never mind. There we go. We have some brown right here. All these scrap pieces. Yeah, it's not being too much of a pack right sometimes. Sometimes I try to keep everything. Not now. I really can't do much with these, so... Shoo. I like that. I like that idea, too donating gifts to the kids especially with it being a you know the holiday season coming through all right so here we go nice flat brush so i can would you stop it all right here we go Stay there. All right, let's get this layer on. It's not layering how I thought it would. That is very clear. How about... Ugh. We got some black here. Always make sure you have a nicely well ventilated area. So I'm gonna put a black base coat on so the brown will show up easier. gun <coughs> you can see the mass start to move and bend
Alright, that should be good enough. Put it back in its holster. Now let's get back to painting. Well, thank you very much. And this track is called Too Much Sugar. Hook's looking good. My fault I found. Oh, that's cool. Maybe you can you can trade Bible studies. You'd even have him in as a guest speaker on some of your uh, streams. Skylar says it looks mean. I would like to. back around here. It's looking like I actually picked the perfect amount of paint. Alright, so there we go. With the, uh, the mankind, with the paint and whatnot. some of that orange like I said I was making a I made a decision and I put some of the brown paint on and instead of wiping it clean before putting on the uh, spray paint I spray painted over it and so now some of the paints coming up <coughs> which is okay because I can always do another coat once it dries again
just a little bit more brown. I do, once again, thank you guys so much for being a part of this and being on here and watching me and stuff. I wouldn't, well, I mean, I'd still be doing it because, you know, I like making things like this, but it wouldn't be as much fun if I didn't have you guys here having fun little conversations with, you know, reading about all of your uh, successes and wants and needs and stuff and sharing mine with you as well. It's fun to have this kind of a group around, you know? Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Because I, I even told, because even, uh, you know, when uh, Skull and Mortar first told me, he's like, well, put your links up on my page and stuff. And I was like, well, I don't know if a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people are coming on here just to watch barbecue. I don't know if they'd be interested to be like, well, this guy does mask making and props. And he does, he does wrestling and horror films. And so then I was actually like the, the minute, the minute Smoke and Simmons barbecue popped on, I was like, oh, holy cow. <laughs> And I even, like, pointed out, uh, I actually, on Friday, I get my very first Twitch check, so that's fun. It could be. I mean, if you think about it, you know, a lot of people wear masks, whether it be in the public with, or just, you know, with certain people. Um, I remember when Rob Zombie did his version of Halloween, you know, Michael Myers had to wear a mask for all of his different emotions and stuff to better display uh, what he was going through and how he was feeling and stuff like that. I, I do the mask just because it's one of those things that's very soothing to me, you know, um, this this is what got me into uh, wrestling, Mick Foley. Uh, I knew Mick Foley back when he was Cactus Jack, and I saw him go through so much as mankind and whatnot. And the fact that, th I mean, he is probably one of the most true Cinderella stories that there are in professional wrestling when it comes to real-life stories. So he's what made me believe that I could be a pro wrestler, even though everybody else said there's no way I'd ever have that chance. And I've been wrestling since 2001, so. Ooh, Legos, yes. No! It's always fun to build. It's always fun to create. Whether it be Lego bricks or, you know, cutting up hockey masks and turning them into this. Hey! What's up? Hey, we're doing the Mankind uh, Voorhees mask. I rolled that today, or tonight. So there you go, Skull and Mortar. I did, I was like, oh, I bet Skull and Mortar's gonna wish he was here when, uh, <laughs> when I rolled this. So. Alright, there. So we got the brown done. Looks very nice. I'm loving it. But it was great for you to pop on like you did, uh, uh Skull and Mortar. We've been talking about you a lot. Just because, you know, you're my buddy. <laughs> you can talk a little bit about Mrs. Uh, Ratlock and stuff. We've we spent this entire um, this entire fall break sick. <laughs> Not COVID, but uh, Minnie Vinny's been sick for a minute now, and now Mrs. Ratlock she's been sick, and she's it's really hit her. I haven't had it yet. I think it's starting, but I haven't had it full blown yet. And we'll probably find out tomorrow. I'll probably be able to, won't even be able to get out of bed or something like that. Who knows? <laughs> that's, that's how it goes, right? All right. So we got this done, this portion done. 
and I'm one of those people that's very impatient. So I'm just gonna move on to what we're doing next. And uh, since Smoke and Simmons Barbecue like the idea of spikes, and I believe uh, um, Master Hooks was as well, let's do it. Let's do some spikes, shall we? I have these nice little studs here that screw in. So we'll give it a quick test drive. I'll say right here on the chin. Hook this through, tighten this up. So even though it is the Mankind Mask, there is going to be a little bit of a difference. I've been talking about a fall break. What's that? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, but you have Florida. You know, how, what's the temperature right now in Florida? <laughs> So you have a second summer break. <laughs> Screwdriver right here. I've only met McFoley, I think, like three or four times. Oh, wait. in the 90s <laughs> well you know I prefer the cold to the hot because you can always put more on you can only take so much off before it's like okay now we're we're in Dahmer territory now <laughs> the worst part about these spikes though is I, my sausage like fingers there we go So we got those two done. Or what some people like air people like being in Arizona because they're like it's hot, but it's a dry heat. Alright, let's do the nose here. And I might, if I can, I'm going to try to paint these gold later. Um, and then probably touch up the brown again. Probably was like, I don't really need to do that on, on during the stream. Because I'm, I'm, I've gone over now about 15 minutes. But it took me 20 minutes to get on here, so... <laughs> I like Florida because, you know, Citrusville is home to Man-Thing. He who knows fear burns at the Man-Thing's touch. I loved Werewolf by Night, and that was the one thing I wish they would have done and somebody would have said that. Well, he who knows fear burns at the Man-Thing's touch. It's like, oh, they did his tagline. There's a lot of spikes going on here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a lot of flipping going on. Thank you. I 
A lot, a lot, and I, there's a lot of things I couldn't have done without my wife, by the way, because my wife bought me these spikes. She's gotten me the mask before. Just whenever it comes time for like a birthday or Christmas, she always asks me, what, what do you want? And I just say, something I can make things with. And she's like, like what? I was like, like anything, honey. And she, she'll get me stuff. She's like, I don't know if you can do anything with this. And I always do, and I always enjoy it. And I think that's one of the things, you know, my wife is a big supporter of some of the stuff I do, and... Without her support, I don't know um, where I'd be, honestly, because it's just, it's hard to find somebody, you know? She is definitely a keeper. I can't wait. She's gotten a bunch of really cool, uh, nerdy patches and pins and stuff. And I keep telling her I'm gonna, we're gonna sit down and make make her one of those battle vests with all those pins and stuff on it. Yep, it's a very important thing. Cause why? It's it's just you know if you have somebody that's always telling you no or you can't do it or anything like that then what's the point you know she's got a she's got some really cool stuff that i'm complete support of an idea for a book and uh it's a really cool book i ain't going to talk about it because you know spoilers but i she's told me about this book idea and i'm like you gotta write this book it, that is like nobody's done a book like this that she's talked about you know, kind of like a thriller, horror deal, with tales of revenge and whatnot. But the, her style of doing it, it's just... Oh. Her explaining it to me, I was, I was on the edge of my seat. And I was like, oh my god, why can't I read this now? I would love to. And she's got great story because she's a microbiologist, she's a hematologist. Um, worked, worked in all these different labs and stuff and hospitals. And she's got so many just stories where you're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, honey, if you got on TikTok and just talked about some of the stuff a little bit, you'd be an overnight sensation. I wonder why this is not wanting to go. This is not one to go in. Gotta get a different tip. Sometimes they don't work. Oh, I'll get you later. <laughs> This is cramping my fingers. And there we go. This is the process that takes the longest putting in the screws. It's very tedious. So I was, I'm like, I'm giving myself 10 more minutes. After that, we're done. <laughs> I keep losing them. Here we go. I'm putting together a cookbook with all my families. Yes. I, I, I have one of those. Uh, those are really cool, though. My, my mom did that, where she's got family recipes from almost every single person. It's always it's always cool. I have one in there for my uh, my Ratlock special. It is a uh, no ice cream root beer float. That is so cool. Sixty recipes, yes. Yeah, if you ever want to throw anything on there, I know I'm not family, but you take uh, twelve ounces of root beer, two coffee creamers, 
and a shot of vanilla syrup. You mix that together and it tastes just like a root beer float, but you don't have to deal with the, uh, the cold iciness that might give you brain freeze and whatnot. Used to, uh, back in the days when I would go to the, there's two different steak and shakes where they actually called it a rat lock whenever we go in and ask for it. Ah, it's so cool. I know sometimes, yeah, when you have a good recipe, a good recipe will transcend time. <laughs> So there's that section done. Three over here. Yeah, it's just that easy. If you go to like a steak and shake or, or any kind of a place that has the coffee creamers as well as like, you can do like a shot of vanilla here or something like that. You just, you order a root beer and you said, I'd like to also get two coffee creamers and can I get a shot of vanilla in that root beer? And they'll do it. And it, it, I came up with that idea because you know, everybody else is doing a root beer float and I just can't stand ice cream at the time. I had very sensitive to cold teeth. And so I was trying to figure out a way I can enjoy root beer float as well without dealing with that pain. And that's what I came up with. Science! <laughs> and, and the whole fun thing too is the fact that since root beer has a different uh, makeup than like say a Coke, it doesn't, the, the creamer didn't curdle as some people would think. So that was excellent to figure out. Free spin like that it makes me think. I was like, "What am I doing wrong?" I even bought a brand new pack of gloves to start doing my artwork in so I don't get paint all over my hands and stuff and look at me. All over the place. <laughs> Grandpa used to make egg creams. Oh, nice! I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven left. <laughs> so your version reminded me of Oh, okay, cool. That's good. See, I like that. And see, there's something you have in your recipe book and you're like, oh yeah, the egg creams. Okay, cool. So it's it's kinda cool that you got something like that going on. I like how there's stuff links together, you know? I mean, your grandpa's a very smart man, obviously. Put that there.
you know, eventually when I, if this can take, if this uh, streaming takes off more, I plan to have like multiple camera angles and I usually have, I usually go through my restream, which I can have two different camera angles, one on me, one on my project. And I was wanting a third camera angle where it's me, my project, and then a little bit far off so you can actually see my entire body working on the project. Here we go. That. One more of these. It's crazy how long it takes just to do something like this. I wish I had like a special like power drill where I just magnetically pick it up, slap it on there, voom, voom, done. <laughs> Uh, the red coffin right now, nothing. <laughs> oh, there a mummy, a picture of a mummy. I haven't decided what I want to put in there yet. I'm probably like I like just putting different things in there. It'll probably end up being like screws or something like that in the future. Oh my god. I was originally working on doing a uh, deal with uh, a friend of mine who's a really good artist. And we were going to do these special trading cards. Dollar Tree. That's where it was. Bought it last year at Dollar Tree. Um, and we were going to have little mini uh, coffin boxes and actually make a trading card set where it would be cut into the shape of a coffin with the art on the front of it and on the back would explain who it is and it would be famous people in the coffin and in, in a certain like decomposed <laughs> it wouldn't be their actual names but you would know who it was but it would have been kind of cool because it was coffin shape where we were going to be ordering like an actual like die cutter that was going to be that shape and it just, it ended up being like, it would have been so expensive that I doubt anybody, like even on a Kickstarter, would have been interested in it. All right, I got five more to go. Probably what I'll do is tomorrow morning I'm gonna hit this with a uh, a glossy clear coat before I put the straps in. I just have four more. My sausage fingers again. I don't know. I might stream tomorrow night. I might not. I don't know. I normally don't stream on. Friday nights, I might save the rest of this for a Monday morning, because I know I'm still going to need to put the straps on it. Two left. One left. I know when I craft, I'm not as talkative, so I do apologize for that, guys. That's why I'm always like, I'm glancing, I'm like, 
Man, I need to talk. I don't know what to talk about since I'm just doing this. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. Boom, we got this This Mankind Jason mask is pretty much finished. I'm probably, uh, I'm going to save the rest. Uh, I may stream either, I'm either going to stream tomorrow night and finish this mask up where I'll be doing some weathering and some pattering uh, around it and then putting on these straps uh, so it can be wearable. And... <laughs> Well, of course he did. Um, so yeah, I, I might be back on tomorrow night uh, and finish this mask up because that'll be fun. So there you have it. Uh, and that, that's going to be cool. Let's see if I can grab this. Ah, oh, giant hands attacking us. I'm sorry. All right, so here we go. Just, oh yeah, once the straps are done, that's going to look very awesome. You're going to love it. Yes, I can see it already. Probably, oh, I think keep the spikes. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right, well, there we go. There we have it. That is the the mask. So thank you guys uh, for being a part of this stream. Um, and just remember, uh, maybe on tomorrow night, I'll do an announcement of so and whatnot, uh, usually through my Facebook. Um, also, if you get on Facebook and type up Vinny Ratlock, you can find my uh, Vinny Ratlock page. Thank you very much, West. Um, peace be with you, Master Hooks. Um, but until then, just remember, this wasn't just me making some crazy, turning some crazy hockey mask into a mankind mask. This wasn't just everybody getting together, talking, you know, getting back into things, making stuff and whatnot. This wasn't just me getting ready for Halloween, brothers and sisters. Um, no, this, um, science. Wish I had my goggles on. I need to go find my goggles. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow night. Have a good one, guys.